son of a wizard, mind you. His face is kept like powerful God. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG on the YouTube.com down there. We like magic today. Got a deck tech for you, and it's one of my favorite decks from years past, but Wizards has done its best to kill this deck in the last few years. But I think there may actually be a case for it in standard. Here's land destruction for you today. Yay! Now, even though Wizards has, like, seriously, they've gone on record as trying to kill this deck because it's not fun. It's not fun your opponent by Igby, but it still supplied a bunch of cards that kill lands. The only thing is, they all cost a lot of mana, they're restrictive in one way or another, you know, but again, think there may be a case in this relatively slow standard with a bunch of control, which land destruction is typically quite good against. So, let's show you what I've got. But, before we get to that, actually, I'm going to go ahead and let you know, people that want me to do modern decks, I've done a modern deck. I'm releasing a deck concurrent with this one that's actually modern land destruction. That deck is very, very real. No joke. So go check that out after you're done with this one. The most important things in a land destruction deck are the things that destroy the lands. <laughs> and again, even though we've got mostly four mana land destruction in this format right now, it's all pretty versatile and does more than just destroy lands. So let's take a look at our main land destruction suite here. We're going to play four copies of Structural Distortion, four copies of Creeping Mold, and two copies of Crumble to Dust in the deck. Crumble to Dust, let's start with that first, actually. You'd think there'd be four copies in this, but especially at F&Ms and stuff, you'll run up against far more basic lands. So, it's sort of, Crumble to Dust gets better the higher the format, um, the higher the tournament you're playing in. But I kind of want to limit the number of Crumble to Dust in the main and put the other two in the sideboard. But it exiles Aether Hub and many, many other things. You know, most competitive decks, at least, will play like sometimes 60 or 70 percent non-basics. So the ability to like get their Aether Hub out of their hand, off the battlefield, out of their library, and <laughs> be done with it forever is actually pretty great, especially these three and even four color decks you see sometimes that rely very heavily on Aether Hub and the energy synergy given by uh, other cards. So Crumble to Dust is actually like really, really good. Um, creeping Mold is super versatile. You know, it can kill lands and two other kinds of things. And the ability to kill artifacts is really super relevant right now. Same thing with Structural Distortion. You know, we can exile artifacts and we can exile lands. And exile is pretty important right now. You'll never have to deal with Scrap Heap Scrounger again. That's pretty cool. And against, like, Delirium, they won't put a land in their graveyard to feel Delirium for them. That's actually something that makes, that's very important. So these are our ten key pieces of land destruction right here. But don't worry, we've also got creatures that can bust lands for us, giving us 14 total cards that destroy lands, and a lot of them are very versatile. Creeping Mold, Structural Distortion, both versatile. Chrono Death will almost always find a target, you know, and the creature that we have that busts lands is also pretty versatile, too. So even if you're not trying to destroy lands specifically, then you have a bunch of different targets that you can go for with these cards. Let's go to the creatures here, and our first few creatures play a very important role for us in this deck. We're going to want to ramp in this deck. Notice again that all of those land destruction cards cost four mana, which is like a whole mana more than just like a stone rain, you know. And if we can basically play some ramp in this deck on turn two, then we'll be able to play these four mana land destruction cards on turn three, effectively turning them into stone rains, making them making them way, way better. You know, a turn three land destruction spell is miles ahead of a turn four land destruction spell. So let me show you these first few creatures. We're going to play four copies of Servant of the Conduit, three copies of Ovenwald Captive, and three copies of Hedron Crawler. Hedron Crawler can help us play one of our creatures, which we'll get to in just a second, or at least it can help us bring it back from the graveyard. Um, Ovenwald Captive can get a little bit bigger later on in the game, and Servant of the Conduit can fix our mana very well and is just ramp on a decent body for the cost. So I'm going to play ten total ramp pieces in this deck, all at two mana to help us get to a turn three distortion or creeping mold, whatever. So very, very important that we ramp, especially considering we're playing some big creatures beyond just these four mana ramp spells. So these things are these things are very, very, very much key in this deck. Definitely play some ramp to not only speed up your land destruction, but speed up these huge creatures we're playing to end the game. So what do we use all that ramp on other than just a turn three structural distortion? There's got to be more to the plan than that. We've got to finish the game off, and we've got creatures in here that one specifically is a must-play and can kill lands and be a huge creature at the same time. So why not play 
four copies of World Breaker. We're also going to play three copies of Burger's Gear Hulk, and we're going to play two copies of Chandra Flamecaller while we're talking about big things to cast with our mana. A World Breaker is definitely the most important card in pretty much the entire deck. You know, it's, it's possible to get a turn five World Breaker pretty easily in this thing. And that'll bust a land up. We are pretty slow in busting lands, but if it dies, we can keep bringing it back, killing lands, or killing other stuff. It can kill a bunch of different kinds of permanents, so it'll always find a target. The ability to bust artifacts is very important right now, just like on Distortion and Mole. So, if your opponent's playing artifacts, which a lot of people are, then we've got a pretty good game against them, because we're just killing artifacts like crazy. But, against, you know, control decks and stuff, you can destroy their lands with World Breaker over and over. you got a huge uh, body that can kill them, and they have a very hard time dealing with forever, <laughs> you know. So World Breaker is a must-play because it not only destroys lands, but it's also a perfect in-game piece that's recursible. So all four copies of World Breaker, and I feel no shame about that, despite its huge casting cost. Verterous Gear Hulk can be really good with all of our little rampy creatures, you know. Turn th uh, two, we can play a ramp guy. Turn three, we can play um, a land destruction piece. And then turn four, we can drop Verterous Gear Hulk, and then we can have a big Gear Hulk and a big, say, Servant of the Conduit or something like that. So just Verterous Gear Hulk spreads the love, and even if it doesn't have another creature out, then it can always just be an 8-8. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that either. So just another thing that can end the game in a hurry and make our creatures that are no longer important for ramp much better as big guys. So I think Verterous Gear Hope, especially considering it's dropped like 50% in price, go ahead and pick those up. It's still a decent card. And Chandra Flamecaller is fantastic. You know, you can drop it on turn five sometimes, wipe the board, and yeah, you'll get rid of your mana guys, sure. But then you've wiped the board and you have a Chandra out, which is usually the prerequisite to winning the game, you know. Her plus one is just so good, and you can recycle your hand if need be. So I just think Chandra is so perfect in this deck. If you've been able to keep them down on lands and they haven't really played anything big, then Chandra can either wipe out all the small creatures they have been able to play, or it'll just put two three-power guys on the board every turn that they have a hard time dealing with effectively. So Chandra is a great in-game piece for us. Now, to tie everything together in the deck, we have to play a little bit of removal, you know. We're very, very bad against aggro. It's our absolute worst matchup. Marty Vehicles hurts us. There's even, you know, just the Red White Vehicles deck, the Humans deck that's in the format right now. We are just, we suffer <laughs> against aggro, and we've got to have some kind of insurance against it. So we're going to play four copies of Harness Lightning and three copies of Galvanic Bombardment. Just the three copies of Bombardment, because I don't want to be bogged down too much by removal against control decks. We really don't want dead cards in any matchup. But since our matchup is so bad against um, aggro, I want to go ahead and include at least three in the main deck and one in the board for when we, we know game two and three that we're playing against aggro. Because, um, again, the matchup's just so horrible that I want an, uh, more outs against it. So three Alvin of Embarments in the main and then four Harness Lightning. Because, you know, you don't even have to really explain Harness Lightning anymore. We're playing red. We'll play Lightning against, you know, Smuggler's Copter and everything in between. And it gives us energy for Aether Hub sometimes. So, yeah, this Harness Lightning, definitely play it even if you don't play Bombardment in the main. Here's your lands right here. There's 24 of them because we're playing all that ramp. I think we can get away with 24 lands. And there's really not much to say about this. Pretty standard fare. Aether Hub is great. Fixes your mana at least the one time. And then can bring back World Breaker from the graveyard with the colorless mana. That's cool. Drone Yard Temple can also do that and can bring itself back after you've sacrificed it. That's cool. And it helps you do the World Breaker thing in the first place. You can pitch it to Chandra sometimes and then bring it back. Drone Yard Temple's good. Boy, that. Other than that, pretty simple. Green and red stuff. Here's the sideboard, and it's a little bit more complicated, at least. There's the one copy of Galvanic Bombardment to round out the playset. Three plummets against not only Smuggler's Copter, but also Abyssin, which we have a hard time dealing with once she's on the board. Hopefully they never get to her, but once she's on the board, we got to have some sort of option. Radiant Flames for when we're dealing with really, really low-to-the-ground aggro that plays Reckless Bushwhacker, all the one-drops. Um, and even though we will be killing some of our ram creatures, it is definitely worth it to not get run over against those decks. Arborback Stomper is also good to put in, in against those, you know, gain your five life back from like an attack step or two and put a huge guy out. Arborback Stomper is always great and it's a really good budget option 
Um, so if you want to play, if you're playing against Dagger, you want to take out some of your um, land destruction and put in this big guy that gains your life back. Criminal Dusk is the inverse, though. When you're playing against Control, Criminal Dusk is just absolutely stupid, so you'll put the other copies of those in and take out the bombardments. Vol uh, volcanic Upheaval, by the way, also very good against Control. You know, they'll sometimes, most of the time, they'll hold up three for like a Void Shatter or four for a Summary Dismissal. And when they say go, you can just at the end of their turn bust one of their lands, and all of a sudden you've got carte blanche to play whatever you want on their turn because they'll usually only hold up the amount of merit men um, necessary, especially in the mid game. So, just Volcanic Up People can be actually a very good play if you do it right against control decks. And instant speed is actually better than you think. And here are your power rankings. A final score of 61, which is pretty good considering it's only about $75 to build this deck right now. And a lot of that is tied up in the creatures and the two Chandras, you know. Verderous Gear Hulk, a little bit of money. World Breaker, the playset at least, a little bit of money. Chandra's about $5 a piece. We're playing a couple of lands, you know. So, the money is definitely concentrated in a few areas and all these land destruction cards and most of these rampers are really, really cheap. So the sort of shell of the deck is very easy to build, to be honest with you. But the Verdurous Gear Holtz may take a second to grab, you know. But altogether, deck's not really super hard to build at all, you know. And we're sort of middling in a lot of these categories. If you can't tell, we got a lot of fives and sixes. But we're not terrible at any one thing, you know. We're not entirely fast or anything. We run out of gas if the game goes very, very long, you know, because we'll just be drawing land destruction that won't matter once they have their 11th land in play. So we have to finish off the game in the mid-game. It's sort of um, a very small window of time, two or three turns, where we need to, you know, take advantage of them not having anything they can play, because they don't have any lands, or at least enough to play them, and drop a huge thing of our own that they cannot deal with because they don't have the resources. But if we miss that window, we're in a little bit of trouble. And there's a couple of things about land destruction that have always been true, you know, um, that make it not the greatest deck, but amazing in certain situations. For instance, the deck is really, really good on the play, very, very bad on the draw. So game one, you really want to be on the play. And if you lose, then you want to definitely take the play in game two. Especially after boards, the deck performs a little bit better against things like aggro, um, but control will have some options to deal with it. So sort of a seesaw, and I think we stay about the same in game two. Just keep this in mind, any deck that Wizards tries to kill off because it's not fun for your opponent is probably a pretty good deck, <laughs> you know, and this one is no different. It's got favorable matchups against some things. I keep talking about how bad the aggro matchup is, but honestly, against things like Green Black Delirium, which wants to play an Emrakul to end the game, you know, against Blue White Flash, which wants to at least get to, Ab to, get to Abyssin, um, then we do pretty well against that. We get our mid-game window against it, you know. Against control decks, we do pretty well, again, as long as we can hit our window. And if a deck, it doesn't matter what you're playing against, if a deck has a slow start or gets a little mana screwed, then we just plow over them. If your opponent takes a two-land hand and they end up not getting that third land within a couple of turns, we're just going to run them over pretty much universally almost no matter what they're playing, unless they're playing really, really low to the ground aggro, which, again... We're going to have a hard time with regardless, <laughs> but if anyone gets a slow start, they're going to be in serious trouble against us. One more thing, by the way, while we're on the subject of matchups, sort of, this deck is really, really good against the Etherworks deck that I keep seeing pop up. People thought that Etherworks was going to die, but I keep seeing it in tournament results. There was a Star City Games, I think it was a, an Invitational, just recently, where there were like four different, and they were different too, Etherworks decks in the top, like, eight. So, <laughs> Etherworks may be making a comeback right now. People are doing weird stuff with it. And this deck does really well against that because all of our, most of our land destruction cards will double as artifact removal as well. So, we're good against Smuggler's Copter, you know, by turn three or four. We're good against most vehicles. We're good against Etherworks. So, against all these artifacts in the format, we have main deck options, and a lot of decks can't say that. That's all I've got for this one. Let me know how you feel about it down there in the comments section. Land destruction is always a fickle mistress. You know, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's blood. It all depends on if you're on the play or on the draw, what you draw to start the game off, what they draw to start the game off is also a huge factor. So sometimes land destruction is just off the charts incredible, but it's all situational. Let me know how you feel about it down there in the comments, and what are we doing next time? Next time, I've got a couple of cool things coming up. You guys know that before a new set comes out, I like to talk about some cards that I would like to see in the set. And usually at least one or two of them is like horribly broken in the comment section. It's like, 
dude that's broken. <laughs> so we all have a lot of fun with those decks. Me putting the cards together and you telling me how broken they are. So I'm going to do the top five things that I want to see in um, uh, Ether Revolt coming up in the next few, few days here. Um, and I'm also finishing up the Frontier Guide. I'm going to do the eight top eight decks in the Frontier format. I'm going to tell you what Frontier format's all about. I'm going to give you a couple of extra decks that are just like weird decks that are up and coming. I've learned a lot about Frontier in the last week or so here, so ready to impart that knowledge very, very soon. And that's probably going to be like a 25, 30 minute video. So get ready for that. All about Frontier. It's coming up soon. But again, I'm tapped out. Let me know how you feel about it down there in the comments section. Like the content if you like the content. Sub if you're new, check out the SoundCloud and make sure that you check out the modern land destruction deck that is actually, I'll say it again, really, really real. I'm excited about that deck. Um, so yeah, check out all that stuff and I'll see you guys next time. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.